Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching the first couple of vlogs. I'm going to be continuing on with Breaking Out with Billy, so all about uh, my gut health and um, hopefully bring us up to speed with where I'm at at the moment. Right. Enjoy. So we get home, I'm still feeling not great at all. Um, it took me probably about a month till I started to feel a little bit better. Um, but I was not good. I was bloating, um, couldn't keep much, some of my food down, just felt like ratchet basically all the time. So I went to the doctors and they're just like, you just got IBS numerous times for many years. Um, even though I told them that I got severely sick over there. Literally wasn't until probably two years after that so 2015 and a new doctor so fresh out of uni or whatever he was like right we're gonna do a breath test um, to test for I can't pronounce it but Haliobacter or something like that which is normally what you get from food poisoning a bacterial thing um, tested for that came back positive did a week of antibiotics and um, retested for that and it was gone so I'm thinking Cool, on my merry way, blah blah blah. Symptoms still persisted, so probably another four more doctors after that still insisted I just had IBS. Um, I was not convinced at all. So I started my own, I guess, research, and thanks to Dr. Google, um, ended up booking in for a colonoscopy, endoscopy, um, getting that done. Nothing came back from that. Um, I had my poop tested, I had um, my bloods done as well, all of this just at a local GP, so your general testings, um, and it was all negative. So I finally just caved and was like, right, I have IBS. <clears throat> so I started trying to work things around so I could determine what was setting it off. Still nothing. Um, so I decided to look into other things, so hormonal things um, and ovary, uterus kind of stuff as well in case it was something to do with my productive system. Um, sorry, reproductive system. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up going and getting an ultrasound, like a pelvic ultrasound, which uh, is an ultrasound basically of your ovaries and your uterus. That was in 2016, 15, yeah, end of 2015, and that came positive, came back positive for polycystic ovaries, um, which I'll delve into in another segment. Um, so that kind of explained some of the inflammation and bloating, but not a lot. So 2016, I decided to take myself off the pill. Um, I heard a lot of things. In regarding to hormones and um, if you have polycystic ovaries the doctors highly recommend you should be on it to regulate your period and along with that um, fitness and health eating healthy will help you with your polycystic ovaries I went off it and it took about three months before I started seeing changes my moods were so much better like I wasn't as lethargic I wasn't as snappy um, just massive dramatic change. Uh, my digestion or my insides weren't as angry, um, so that was definitely one of the good changes that I made. Although doctors have been drilling me this whole time because I'm not on anything. No pill, no little marina thing, no whatever those other weird things that go in there. Um, not for that. All the fake hormones and everything it just doesn't doesn't work. Um, although. My period is not regular whatsoever, um, but that is the next stage of fixing um, and sorting once I sort out my gut issues. So at this point I was still getting lots of IBS symptoms, so I had accepted that I've got IBS, full and truly. Until um, last year I did a fitness comp and I also went vegetarian in the beginning of January. Um, and then during competition my coach was freaking awesome with dealing with everything so we would try certain foods um, and I'd be like right like I'm still bloating after this this is still happening um, and then eventually we went down to basically an elimination diet um, 
whilst mid comp, so probably I think it was around April, I went full vegan as well. Um, so all plant based, no dairy, no meat, um, no any animal products whatsoever. Um, this helped massively. Um, also being on an elimination diet, which is very bland, plain whole foods. Um, obviously, I felt amazing because I wasn't eating any preservative, preservatives, no sugar, no nothing. Um, we literally got down to the last straw and I was still bloating um, with like the finest, <clears throat> finest foods and the, the best things you could eat for your gut and whatnot. So my coach sent me to a specialist and that's where my life changed. Okay, so for the test. So I saw him a couple of times, but the first time I ever spoke to him, it was a five minute conversation on the phone. I haven't even e ever met him before. He asked me a few basic questions um, regarding my symptoms and whatnot. And he basically gave me his pre-assumption before we did any tests. So SIBO, which stands for small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Um, <clears throat> Deficiency, copper and zinc, he said that as well, and my hydrochloric acid, which is what breaks your food down in your stomach. Um, we did tests, so the first test we did was a SIBO test, which basically is, um, you have to have, um, eat a specific diet for two days before the test, and then fast for 12 hours. It's 16 all up, but, um, so you fast for 12 hours, and then you do a breath test, so you breathe into this balloon thing, every 20 minutes for three hours so there's 10 tests all together that basically brings back results of the methane and the hydro hydrogen gases in your stomach um, and that tells you what your bacteria and whatnot is doing um, i also did a poop test but like a in-depth one um, so not just from your local gp um, and that came po back positive for a parasite. So I had two, two types of bacteria at least, or two, I guess, groups, so small intestine and large intestine, and a parasite in there for like five years, ruining my life. Um, yeah, so we basically worked out a plan, um, and I was to do this once I finished comp because I wanted to still go on stage and do my thing after I'd worked so hard to get to where I was. So once we did all the tests um, and we started treatment, so what he did, I also did a blood test, a very in-depth blood test, and sent off a hair sample. Sounds weird, but these things, your hair, so right from your scalp, which was convenient because I had an undercut at that point. <laughs> Um, basically tells you what nutrients and things you're deficient in um, and what you're absorbing so I was deficient in zinc and copper magnesium vitamin D and I so once we did that I figured out what I needed um, I went on to a low FODMAP diet which is um, I followed an app called Monash University um, so the app was really 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 helpful um, I followed that, pretty much made all my own food from scratch, um, <clears throat> and portion sizes made a big difference too, so say half an avocado was, um, sorry, a quarter of an avocado was okay, but half was too much, because the chemicals and the fructulose and ogulose, and there's all these weird other words that I'm not going to go into, um, they get higher and higher, and also how much you have one meal and the time between before you have it again. Um, so I went on to that, ordered special supplements, so I literally just got made up what I needed through Compound, um, which my specialist put me on to as well. So got all those tablets all made up specifically for what I needed. There was no extra additives. If you have a look at the bottles that you get. Turn to close, change of scenery. <laughs> Ran out of battery, my camera died. Um, so anyway, if you have a look at the um, ingredients on the back of a bottle, say I bought zinc, you look in that and there is so many other minerals and vitamins that 
you may or may not need. Um, so with compound, they literally just make what you need. So zinc, just in their little capsule, just it, that's it. Um, vitamin D, that's it. They just make what you need.